it was part of our a trig unit for our math class. Um, we were learning how to find the measurement um, of the length of a side of a right angle triangle uh, when given the an angle and um, a length of another side of the triangle. With the skill, we were able to find the height of a really, really tall building, which is what we did. Um, we found the height of the Federal Reserve Bank in Boston. So the students were practicing these basic skills, but then we moved on into applications of right angle trigonometry. So we were talking about bearings, we were talking about angles of elevation and depression, and angles in three-dimensional objects. And the, the purpose of this activity was to take that into a real-life environment. First, we all got into groups, and we kind of figured out what we were going to do, how we were going to do it. Next, um, we actually went out the execution. Um, we kind of went out on the street and we did our measurements. The only materials we needed were um, a really, really long tape measure, um, a magnetic angle meter, and a ruler. Um, so basically first we measured the distance from the building um, to the point where we were standing, where we were looking at the top. Well, Isaac Gowan, I thought that we could take a picture of us holding a ruler up to the height of the building slanted so that we could measure the angle in a protractor after we took the picture. But as soon as we got there, that wasn't really the best idea because we couldn't back up into traffic to try to take a picture of a 600 foot building. When we got there, we kind of had to modify it. We just, we took like this angle meter, which basically you put onto a ruler and you take the ruler so that it's like angled to the height of the building and you're looking there. From that we found out the degrees to the height of the building um, rather than taking a picture and using a protractor to measure it afterwards. And then we put it into this big old equation right here. The angle would go there and then the height of the building is right there. Kind of crazy when you can't really see real numbers but that, that was our mathematical process. This was the height, that's what we got, and then we had to add our own height. Once we had ordered the materials that the students thought they needed, we did a trial run in a classroom to find the height of a classroom, because if they could do that, they could use that to find the height of the building. And what that really allowed students to do was, for some teams, they realized that their method wasn't the most accurate method, and they could tweak it in certain ways to, to calculate it, because they started to realize that a small difference in the angle could mean a huge difference in the height of a building. Even if it was off by just one degree, it made like a 30 foot difference. So it was kind of difficult to get it exactly right, but in the end we got like a 1.6% um, of error. So it's, it was pretty accurate and the other team was within 5% too. We're going to be creating our own uh, ebook out of, out of it. Um, we've been recording through video and audio and just basically our math calculations also. Trigonometry can often be a very abstract mathematical concept that a lot of students don't enjoy because they don't see the purpose of it. So my idea with this activity was to ask my students to create something that they were excited about. So that ebook hopefully is something that, that they're enthusiastic about and that they've been creative about and they can share that with other students their age or even younger and, and interest them in studying trigonometry because they saw the value of it. What I didn't think about was the fact that it was a bank and that security inside the bank would be curious about what these people with measuring tapes were doing outside the bank. So, Actually, my favorite part was doing the calculations. Our team won, so 